Today, I want to properly answer the question, how easily can you build a cross-browser extension? And how similar are the APIs supported by Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari? I've spoken to a lot of developers who think each of the browsers have their own entirely distinct set of extension APIs. While there was much more divergence in the past, browser vendors are now working together, and for the most part, the platforms have converged. There are some interesting pieces to talk about, manifest v3 and browser-specific functionality. But if you're building a simple extension for Chrome, it might even work out of the box in Firefox or Safari. We can get a good sense of this on MDN. So just like on the web, there are compatibility tables for extension APIs. So if we look at the runtime namespace, for example, we can find the runtime.sendMessage method. And this is like one of the core APIs that every extension needs. And you can see if I scroll down here, send message is supported across all of the browsers. There's a specific incompatibility in Safari. Um, but largely, this is supported everywhere. This is possible for two reasons. Firstly, browsers have worked independently to develop implementations of a similar API surface. And secondly, we meet regularly in the Web Extensions community group to find inconsistencies and figure out solutions. So the Web Extensions community group is this W3C community group. You can sort of find information about the group and all of the issues that we're working on on GitHub. And this is really where we do a lot of that coordination. Now, I also really like just how quickly we're able to act on feedback now. So uh, just about a week ago, I opened this issue about adding a new runtime to get version method. And within a week of adding that, or creating that issue even, there's an implementation in Chrome Canary. You can see that there's also been a commit in WebKit, so this should be supported in Safari soon. And there's also a community member who's contributed a patch to Firefox. So hopefully that will land soon, and this will be available in Firefox. What about the cases where you need to have different code based on the browser? Well, one option is to use the navigator.useragent.global. So you might already be familiar with this, but if I just run navigator.useragent, you can see our user agent here. You can see that this tells us that we're running in Chrome. That's generally frowned upon, but mostly because there's a history of it being used to target specific versions or limit functionality to certain browsers. It can sometimes make sense in extensions if you need to change your branding or onboarding flow. The other option is to do something at build time. For example, you can have a shared code base, but then swap out the images you're using based on which browser you specify in an environment variable. Now, I do want to talk about two key differences between browsers. First of all, the namespace used to access APIs. So in Chrome, you're always going to use the Chrome namespace or the Chrome global. So in this case, we're doing chrome.runtime.oninstalled. Uh, but in Firefox and Safari, you're using browser. So you can do browser.runtime.oninstalled. And this is an inconsistency that's existed for a while. Right now, the solution to this is the fact that Firefox and Safari both support the Chrome Global. So you can build an extension that just uses the Chrome Global, and that will work everywhere. There are also polyfills that are available, which will add support for the Browser Global to Chrome. We're actively working on fixing this, though. Starting in Chrome 143, Chrome also supports the browser namespace. And that's the result of some work we've been doing over the last few months. This was actually less trivial than we thought it would be. We really wanted to ship this soon. But it turns out that there are some extensions which detect which browser they're in by looking at whether or not the browser namespace is available. And so once we made the browser namespace available, that led to some other issues. So we had to sort of figure out a solution for those. But ultimately, with these common APIs, you can get a long way. Actually, before I worked at Google, I was working on browser extensions at another company. And we had a single code base that we used to ship our extension for all of the major browsers. So we could make a change once and then ship that everywhere. Then there's Manifest v3. This sounds like and was a big change. But in terms of browser compatibility, it really comes down to two things. First of all, the behind the scenes logic of an extension now runs in a service worker in Chrome. Safari supports both service workers and background pages, which was the Manifest v2 approach. Firefox supports only background pages, but they have plans to support service workers in the future. So there are some differences, but the good thing is that since service workers are generally more restricted than a background page, if you write an extension that works in a service worker, it will usually work elsewhere too. The other big change was around network filtering, like blocking requests. That's what content filtering extensions do. In Manifest v2, and in Manifest v3 in Firefox, you can use the web request API. So this is an API that lets you sort of 
analyze and filter requests and block or redirect requests, everything that you might need to do in those sorts of extensions. In Manifest V3 in Chrome, that API is still available, but only for observing requests. So if you want to do something like blocking requests, you need to do that with a different API instead. That's the declarative net request API. Now, the declarative net request API is supported across all browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge. So if you're able to implement your functionality with this API, then it will work everywhere and you don't need to worry. Otherwise, then you might need to have some logic that runs one way in some of the browsers and then another way in Chrome. You can choose whether you use the web request or declarative net request API based on the browser you're running in. Now, there are a few other intentional differences that I haven't talked about yet. First of all, each browser has a different store. So we have the Chrome Web Store, and then there are other stores for other browsers. And also, each browser may support specific APIs that only make sense based on their functionality. But the answer to that original question we asked about cross-browser compatibility is a resounding yes. You can absolutely build cross-browser extensions, and it's a very viable and commonly used approach. There are some differences, but as you build up an understanding of these, they're all tractable. That's all for this episode of Developer Mode. Feel free to leave your questions for future episodes below. But otherwise, thanks for watching.